So, uh, the message for the day is called uh, the, mini, the Mystery of, of Dreams. Uh, and we're going to take our scripture reading from the book of Job. Job chapter 33, verses um, 14 and, and 15. Job chapter 33, verse 14 and, and 15. All right, Job chapter 33, um, verse 14 and, and, um, and 15. I'm going to read from the King James Version. And I'll read. It says, For God speak, speaketh once, ye twice, but men perceive it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men in slumbering upon the bed, Amen. May God bless the reading of his word because, because it is holy. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name, we thank you, Father, for your word. Your word that is sharper than any two-edged sword. Father, as I minister to your people, may you speak through me. Touch my lips of clay and give me utterance. Father, we thank you. Open our spiritual ears, Lord. Open the eyes, O Lord, of our hearts. Father, we thank you. Amen and amen. So, the background to this story, for some that may not know, is after Job had gone through the challenges that he went through, a couple of his friends came and uh, started accusing him even that, hey, there's something that you must have done for all these things to happen to you, right? So, it was a group of friends, and even the wife ended up saying, can you just curse your God and, and die? But then there was this young man. He was the youngest of the, of the friends. His name was Elu. And he let everyone speak. And when you read verse 32, chapter 32, verse 7, he says, I listened to you guys speaking, and I kept quiet because I wanted to respect the wisdom and the years that you have. But you know what? After listening to you, you guys don't know anything about what you're talking about. So the scripture that we have just read, Elo is now speaking to Job to say, you know what? Do not be stubborn. Perhaps God has spoken to you, but you did not decode what God was talking to you about. And as I was reading the scripture, I, I was just reminded of the, the spirituality of life. How spiritual life is. And unfortunately, a lot of us go through life and don't realize how much spiritual life is. If I could go back to, if I could turn back the ends of time, unfortunately, it can't happen. I'll, I'll always have to remind my children, the people that I love, about how much spiritual life is. Any person that understands that life is spiritual, he has got an advantage over the next person. Even if you're a Christian and you don't have an appreciation of the spirituality of life and there's a herbalist next to you and they understand the spiritual laws, they are at an advantage compared to you. And because life is spiritual, it's governed by spiritual principles. I'll give you a very good example. The law that you reap what you sow or what we can call the, the, the law of seed and harvest. Right? And that's why you see even some corporations, they go to the extent of giving back to the community because they respect that law. Amen? And the reason why I keep on emphasizing the spirituality of life is there are then mysteries that are coupled with these laws. And one of those mysteries is the mystery of dreams. How many of us dream? And how many of us think they don't dream? <laughs> but the verse that we've just read, it reminds us that God speaks to us. So because God is not a man that he should lie, neither is he a son of man that he should repent or change his mind. If, if you think you don't dream, you need to go back to God and say, God, this is what your word says. Your word says you speak to men through dreams and vision. How come you have never spoken to me? Amen. So let us 
talk about dreams a little bit. Have you had that thing where, for instance, you sleep for about an hour? This is just an example. Let's say you sleep for about an hour, but when you dream, you, you may dream you were on a journey that takes you probably from New York to Chicago. But in reality, that's a two-hour flight. In reality, that's a 14-hour drive. So what does that tell you about dreams? That dreams are spiritual. How can you like, try and act out something that you dreamed about in an hour and if you to act it out, it can take you days. So that, that's a mystery there. And that is why uh, Apostle Peter says a day is like a thousand years to God and a thousand years like a day. So that's the first thing that we learn about dreams. That they teach us how to interpret time in the spiritual world. Right? So God uses dreams as a, as a communication channel. How many of us have got this thing that the Holy Spirit speaks to you and you ignore. The Holy Spirit prompts you to do something and then you do not pay attention and then you go contrary to what the Holy Spirit has said. And then later on, that thing happens and you're like, you know what? Something in me was telling me that I should have done this. But that opportunity is gone. So God in his wisdom realized, you know what? These people that I created in my own image, I think I'm also better speaking to them in dreams because when we are asleep, our flesh is not as active as our spirit is. So when that happens, we then decode things from the realm of the spirit and God speaks to us. In most cases, if not all cases, you, you, you do not decide what you dream. Right? So that means that every time that God places something in your dreams or in your spirit, there is a message in that. So dreams are a channel of communication. Dreams are a way that God speaks to us. And we see in the Bible, in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, we see God speaking to his people through dreams. But unfortunately, the devil has sort of convinced us that dreams are just for, for entertainment. Let's look at a very familiar, play, uh, familiar story. In Genesis chapter 28, we read a story about a gentleman called Jacob. Jacob had stolen his brother Esau's birthright. And the mother decides to scheme and say, you know what, I'm going to send you to your uncle Laban out in an area called uh, Padan Aren. So Jacob sets on a journey. And he gets to this place. He's exhausted. And the word of God tells us that he took a stone and used that stone as a pillow. And as he was sleeping, he had a dream. And in that dream, the word of God tells us that he saw a ladder. And with that ladder, there were angels ascending and descending. Remember, this was a man that had no relationship with God. But he had a vision. And in that vision, God spoke to him and said, you know what? I'm going to be with you where you are going. Jacob wakes up and he realizes the presence of God was here, but I knew not. And we learn that he then anoints the place of the stone with oil and he calls the place Bethel, which means the house of the Lord. What does Jacob mean? Jacob means a deceiver. So we see here a deceiver who changed as a result of a dream. So dreams have that opportunity to alter one's life. Jacob was never the same after that encounter. Because we read in that passage that he even said, if this God that has appeared unto me is going to be with me wherever I go, oh, I vow that I will not leave him. I vow that I'm going to give him a tenth of whatever I'm going to have. This is a man that has just stolen his brother's birthright. <laughs> but because of that strong encounter, he became a changed man. 
how many of us have had dreams and we we totally ignore and and here's the thing with dreams at times you may get out of your bed and the dream is so vivid in your head and you're like okay i'm going to pray about it later or i'm going to write it i'm going to jot it down later and then within minutes it's gone <laughs> dreams are spiritual because that time when you're sleeping you are interacting with a different realm so like jacob i'm just here to remind you or to urge you to pay attention to those dreams you never know what god deposits in your spirit pastor mentioned the well the second encounter that i had with him because the first one is not as important <laughs> but um dreams are dear to my heart and i'm going to try and be as practical as possible the goal here is that we we get to learn that god speaks to us so what drove me to come and have pastor pray for me is li life was tough i'm not going to lie but the greatest challenge was that i was having nightmares you know it got to a point that i was even embarrassed to invite friends at my place or to visit friends why because i'll get these attacks and i'll scream and scream and scream believe you me it was embarrassing and it got to a point that because of those same attacks i i developed anxiety because i knew that the moment i tried to sleep i'll have dogs chasing me i'll have snakes chasing me so it was hard so i drove and then i remember it was it was here and and pastor prayed for me <laughs> and after he prayed for me he laughs and he says you know what god is telling me that you've got a gift of dreams and you are going to be calling people and say hey god has shown me this let us pray so here is the irony of this whole thing you are telling a man that is struggling with nightmares that god uses you <laughs> because i was desperate i had tried all that i knew to do and nothing had worked i was like you know what let me let me follow what this man is saying so he wrote a few scriptures for me he says trust when this happens read the scriptures and pray this way that's how this journey started so i also struggled with migraine headaches then and i remember maybe a few miles before getting home i had this very sharp pain that moved right from my left eye and then it went out through my ear that was the end of my challenges with migraine headaches so i experienced deliverance probably a few hours as as life went on those nightmares started to gradually disappear gradually disappear up until a point that the prophecy or the word that he had given me came to fruition so what i learn out of that is at times the area of your life that you struggle with the most chances are that that's where your calling is right and the enemy wants to make sure that you end up doubting yourself so introspect check yourself see where you are probably struggling the most they in they in may lie your calling so if your health is struggling you may probably have the gift of healing why because when someone comes to me and says trust i've got this problem i have nightmares i have this i can empathize with them because it's something that i've gone through how do you teach someone to swim when you have never been in the water it's almost impossible right so i'm just here to encourage someone that may be going through a challenge that look closely and don't give up hidden in that pain hidden in that confusion is your anointing so keep praying to god keep praying to god keep asking god to open your eyes another thing that we learn about dreams in the bible is dreams can be used as a medium of exchange we all know the story of king solomon and every time we talk about king solomon he's associated with his wisdom the wisest man to ever grace this earth 
When you read uh, First Kings chapter three from verse First Kings chapter three from verse five to verse nine, the word of God tells us that King Solomon got to a place called Gibeon, and when he got to Gibeon, God appeared to Solomon in a what? In a dream. In that same dream, God asked Solomon, "What can I do for you?" And then Solomon goes and says, "Grant your servant." understanding to govern your people. And what happens afterwards? God says, because you didn't ask for material possessions, I'm going to give you that as well. And what we miss there is this is that this interaction happened in a dream. This guy was sleeping. <laughs> so if God could give someone something in a dream, what, what are we missing that God has already given us? So it's important that we pay attention to, to, to our dreams. And we know how King Solomon went on to become one of the greatest leaders in the Bible. It was on the account of dreams. So dreams are not for, for entertainment, like what a lot of, uh, a lot of, people, a lot of people think. So it's, it's very important um, to take them seriously. Now, because the devil is a copycat, <laughs> he's also going to talk to you through dreams. And because we say dreams are a medium of exchange, the devil can also shortchange you and exchange certain things in a dream. I, I know this may be a little bit embarrassing, but I know a few people have experienced that thing where they are violated when they are sleeping. And at times people just wake up, they clean themselves, and, and life goes on. That is one of the most dangerous dreams, and I'll try and explain why. Have you ever read that verse that says, He that sleepeth with a harlot is one with them? In the spiritual world, you may think it's a dream, but in the spiritual world, that has actually taken place. So if you, don't, if you don't do anything when you wake up, what you have done is you have given that spirit authorization to be your spouse in reality. And because you have not saved that spirit with the divorce papers when you woke up, that spirit is either your husband or your wife. And then you go about life, if you're married, and then just see, maybe you develop a dislike for your husband, your wife, out of nowhere. It is because in the spiritual realm, there's, there's a spouse again. And the thing about spirits is, spirits don't like to share. The Holy Spirit included. Exodus chapter 20 verse 3, you shall have what? No other gods besides me. So even that spiritual spouse is saying, you shall have no other spouse beside me. Spiritual laws. Say it again. Spiritual laws. My people perish because of lack of knowledge. He doesn't say the heathens. My people. So if you are a lady, you bath, you do all sort of things, you, you are beautiful, but the spiritual realm is saying, hey, Madam, <laughs> you are married. That's the first thing. So you may see that your relationships are not working. And because you are yoked with this spirit, you are one with this spirit. The other thing that potentially could happen is it can share in your financial resources. Right? Because when people are married, what is mine is yours. What is yours is mine. So you realize that you work and you work and you can't just explain the way your finances, they mysteriously disappear. So I, I urge you, brothers and sisters, that do something every time you have a dream that you don't like because your inaction about it is authorization. Ignorance is authorization in the spiritual realm. Silence is authorization. And I'll try and prove it. Remember the story of the fall of man in the Garden of Eden. When God goes on to Adam and Eve and said, 
why did you eat of the tree? And then Adam goes like, it was the woman. The woman says, it's the snake. Do we have an account of the snake saying anything? The snake kept quiet. Right? And then fast forward to the New Testament. When Jesus was being accused before Pontius Pilate, there was a point that he was quiet. So, it's important that we speak. It's important that we challenge some of the things that, that happen to us in, in dreams. You may say, oh, trust, you have given examples from the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, we see God moving people through dreams. When you read Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 21, there's an account there. After angel Gabriel had appeared unto Mary in a dream and, and told her that which you are carrying is holy and she was about to be betrothed to, to Joseph. Joseph now knows that Mary is pregnant <laughs> but he had nothing to do with that pregnancy. An angel appeared to Joseph through a what? Through a dream and told him that which Mary is carrying is holy. Please take her to be your wife. What would have happened if that dream had not appeared? The story would have been different, right? Fast forward, baby Jesus is born. And we hear that Herod was killing all children that were two years and below. The same angel appeared unto Joseph and said, Joseph, take your family and go to Egypt. So dreams can give you direction terms of confusion. Dreams can tell you the way to go. And you see, the thing with dreams is that this is what I like about God. There are times that you are too invested in something that even when God speaks to you, you probably ignore. And at times you'll speak through someone. I'll give you an example. Around 2018, um, I was dating someone. Sh Shandy knows the story. Um, so we, we're having problems with this person. I, I knew in my spirit that she wasn't the one, but I, I kept trying. Right? You know, a, a angry dog is not fed. <laughs> we, the people that don't love us are the people that we love at times and vice versa. So God knew that I was invested in this person. He used Brother Libert, the, the Libert that we, we attend church with. God appeared to Libert in a dream. And he, he had a vision of exactly what was happening in that relationship. It was tough for Libert, but he gave me a call. He says, trust, this is the situation, and he explained it. He says, God showed me two ways. You went ahead and you married this person, but you were miserable. But you, you went ahead. The, the other part that I saw, you married this person, and you were happy. But the thing is, I know this person. I could sense that I've known this person. I've met this person before. But for some reason, I don't have a name. Two years later, I'm coming out of my wilderness. I was coming from Kenya, those that know my story. And I had a chance to call Brother Liberty. And we're just catching up. He asked, oh, so are you dating someone? I'm like, oh, yeah. I met this lady. Her name is Shanti. She was at EY. We laughed. It turns out my father-in-law and Liberty's father were colleagues. They worked together. And Shandy and Libert at some point stayed in the same police camp. <laughs> so it, it taught me that I think within your network, within your network, I ask people to pray for you. Ask people to even go to reveal things about you through them. I can imagine what could have happened if I had not, if God had not spoken to, to Brother Libert. We also see in the Bible dreams protecting people. We, we read the story of, of, of David facing Goliath, and David says to, to Goliath, you come to me with a spear, a sword, and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the God of Israel. Right? And David goes on to say, the battle belongs to the Lord. Do you know that God can even fight for you in dreams? If you read Genesis chapter 30 verses 1 through 3. Abraham is going to, Abraham is in Jera. And Abraham had this thing that every time that he gets to a new place, 
He says to Sarah, tell people that you are my sister. <laughs> so that happens. And then a king called um, Abimelech takes Sarah as, as, as his wife. Guess what happens? God appears to Abimelech in a dream and warns him and says, Thou art but a dead man because this woman that you have taken is someone's, life, someone's wife. So Abimelech knew there and there that, you know what, I have to give Sarah back to her husband. So pray that God fights for you in dreams. There are certain battles that you probably don't need to know about. Battles that God just, just fights for you and you may, you may not have an idea. Amen? So you, you, you may be thinking that, well, this is all, this is all um, a bit theoretical. So what are some of the things that we can do practically to allow God to speak to us through dreams? The first thing you need to do, pray about it. Pray. Ask God to speak to you. Because the word of God tells us, if you ask anything in my name, I'll what? I'll give you. Pray. Pray to God. God speak to me. If you can't speak to me, speak to someone that will then speak to me. <laughs> but equated to that, let's learn to sleep to pray before we go to bed and realize the importance of prayer before we go to bed and avoid watching certain movies before you go to bed because chances are if you're going to watch a horror movie yeah it's, it's going to be something different so what you watch is also is also important because certain certain um, images may be imprinted on your brain and it's difficult to shake them off by the time you go to bed and and pastor has taught as this next point for, for a while now. Learn to have a, a, what, what I can call a dream journal. Where you journalize your dream. If I were to give you my phone, you'll see things from probably 20, 2020. And the, the thing with that action is, when you put your journal right next to you, you are challenging God that, hey, I'm, I'm expecting you to speak to me. I've got my paper and my pen. So speak, because when I wake up, I need something to write. <laughs> so let's have a dream journal. And the, the thing with writing things down is you won't forget. And when you write it down, they become your prayer points. You know if it's something good, it's something that you have to call to fruition in your life. And if it's anything negative, you rebuke. The word of God reminds us. It says, write a vision in the book of Habakkuk. It shall not tarry, but it will come to pass. There's something spiritual about writing. Do you realize that? God, talk, God talks about it. We know that Moses, saw, Moses wrote the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai. So writing is something has got a spiritual component um, attached to it. So let's say you have, you have dreamt. It just doesn't end there. You need to act. Right? If it's a good dream, like I said, call it to fruition. If it's something bad, rebuke it. And you see, we are shortchanged by the devil because there are times that he uses things that are seemingly good or nice, but they are meant to, to harm us. I'll give you an example. There were times that I used to dream about my late siblings. And then in my head, I'm thinking I miss them. But as I got to learn over time, those are monitoring spirits or familiar spirits. The devil is using someone's face, someone that you love. I mean, it's difficult for me to wake up and rebuke my late brother or my late sister. But that's what you have to do. Because if you don't do that, you are violating a principle. You are authorizing the monitoring spirits to keep monitoring you. Right? So, let us have the wisdom. The word of God reminds us. It says, be wise as serpents. Every time that the Bible talks about an animal, let's study the traits of the traits of um, the traits of that animal. The other point to learn is we need to weed out fear. No matter how how bad the dream is, know that you serve a God that is that is a powerful God. You serve a God whose name is Elohim, is the creator of the universe. He created everything, yourself included. And when he created you, he gave you what? Authority. Right? You have, you have a set of scriptures. When, when things go wrong, you go to those scriptures. Shandy calls them um, 
the five stones, you know, the five stones of David. So you have, you have five scriptures, scriptures that you can go to when things go bad. Pastor gave me Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give you power, power to tremble over the serpents and the scorpions. So you have nothing to fear when that happens. You know that my God is a God that can fight for me. So whether the devil tries to attack you in dreams using snakes, dogs, whatever the situation is, just remember that you have the power, you have the authority to rebuke whatever comes your way. The last thing that I'm just going to quickly talk about is let us have patience. Rome wasn't built in a day. Remember the story of David. At 17, he had a dream where the sun, the moon, and the stars were bowing before him. But that took years for him to stand before Pharaoh and be crowned governor of what? Of Egypt. So let us learn to be patient. 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 To be patient. Thank you very much. May, may, thank you. Word, what a powerful word. You may be seated. I want us to, I want to pray for somebody. Because when the word of God comes like this, there is a purpose. There is somebody in the sanctuary or online that I need to pray for. You have been having these dreams that you don't understand what is happening to you. Remember our scripture today says God speaks through dreams to warn you of impending danger. But if you don't pray to cancel that dream, you are agreeing with what the devil put in the dream and it will happen so the remedy is when you have a dream you wake up you cancel it in the name of jesus dreams are real people of god it is a way god communicates to you the devil you heard from my son that he is a copycat he uses the same strategy that God uses to attack you. Because the devil cannot visit you in the afternoon and say, Hi, I've come to give you a disease. He doesn't do that. You heard last week I prayed for somebody who traveled to be prayed for. They had a deadly disease in their system that the doctors had diagnosed and upon talking to the person they said she dreamt some women injecting something inside of her when i prayed for her when she was delivered the demon said oh it is us we gave him that disease in in the dream so there are some things that the devil will do to you when you are sleeping. I can give you countless number of examples where during my deliverance work, when the devil is confessing, there are things that happen when you are sleeping. Some people, even God gives you ideas. That's another category of people that I need to pray for. God will give you an idea in the dream to fix your solution to give you a solution rather but you ignore it you have a dream that has been occurring to you today i want to pray for you so that that dream that is positive in your life manifests into reality some of you you always dream driving a mercedes-benz and you have never driven it 
When you wake up, you are driving a Toyota and you, you have a shock. But you have been dreaming, I'm driving a Mercedes-Benz. God is trying to tell you that I've got better things for you. I've got great things for you. But you ignore them. There are lots of warnings that come in our lives. Like what my son says, the more you ignore God will just say, okay, this one doesn't want to talk to me. I'll tell you this week, I had a dream, very vivid, that somebody was calling me, saying that your wife is sick, she can't talk to you on the phone. They couldn't have her talk to me on the phone. And when I woke up, I prayed, I rebuked that dream. Guess what? Then within a couple of hours when she was at school, I get a phone call from her phone. And there is another lady talking to me, saying, hey, you better come and pick up your wife. She can't talk on the phone. Come and pick her up. Can you imagine? I've been warned in the dream. And in the morning it happens. I drove there. Picked her up. Took her to be checked. And the doctors found that there was nothing. Which It was an attack. The devil wanted to, 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 to give her a stroke. That is how the dream came. The devil wanted to give her a stroke. But when I woke up, I said, devil, you are a liar. So I want us to pray today. That dream you have been having, we want to cancel it. Some women, you have been having these dreams of men violating you. We need to stop it. And you know, some of you, when you are about to get a breakthrough, that is where you get all those weird dreams. So God is speaking to somebody. This has been a word for somebody. That God has got great things for you. But the devil wants to disturb you through dreams. But we have the power to cancel. So today we are going to pray. We are going to pray for those people. I'm not going to be very specific, but you know yourself. You are saying, Pastor, there is this dream. This negative dream that has been affecting me. I need to rebuke it. We are going to help each other to pray and rebuke those dreams. And there is another category of people you have been having this dream of good things coming. It's like you, 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 you dream everything is nice but in reality there is nothing. There are people who are dreaming being taken back to their childhood where you used to suffer that's where the devil wants to take you to i'm now giving you categories of people god is going to help you pick up your dream you have been taken back to your school your old time where you say oh i'm always dreaming going back and let me tell you there are some people that i've prayed for here in the united states they are all they've always been dreaming going back to africa they are going back to africa when i pray for them a demon comes out and says oh we want her back we don't want her here she doesn't belong there there are people you are always dreaming your wallet has been stolen <laughs> your wallet is you are losing your wallet or you go to an atm card and your your card is not working you, you have been dreaming your, 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 your pockets are dripping there with holes. That's a total sign that the devil is stealing your financial resources. No wonder your finances are not balancing. You are allowing the devil. Some people you are dreaming being chased by crazy people at night. And you ignore it. Those are attacks. We want to cry to the Lord right now. 
In fact, we are not going to cry. We are going to rebuke. We are going to speak to those things that are coming in our dreams. You know them. I don't. But let us begin to pray. I want you to stand in the sanctuary. I want somebody to begin to cry to the Lord right now. Begin to cry to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm rebuking every dream. Begin to rebuke every dream that you have been dreaming in your life. You know the dreams you have been having in your life. Begin to rebuke them. Begin to speak against every dream. Begin to speak against every dream. Every dream from the enemy. Open your mouth right now. This is a serious time that the devil is now scared. We want to light fire on the enemy. Open your mouth right now. Begin to pray against that dream that is scaring you at night. That dream that is giving you nightmares. Begin to pray right now. God is about to touch you. God is about to touch you. Those dreams, those dreams have no power over you. I'm praying for you right now. Those dreams have no power. I refuse. I refuse with my destiny. Tell the devil and say, devil, I refuse with my destiny. Tell the devil and say, I will not allow you in my life. I will not allow you in my dreams. I will not allow you in my family through dreams. I will not allow you to touch my health through dreams. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Begin to tell the devil you don't have any space in my life. I rebuke you. I challenge you in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Don't allow the devil to take over your life. Don't allow the devil to take over your family. Don't allow him. Don't allow him. Rebuke him. Rebuke him. Rebuke him. Rebuke him right now. Rebuke him right now. Just say, devil, you are a liar. You are a liar. You are a liar. We come against you right now. We come against you right now. We come against you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. There is no weapon that will be formed against you that will prosper. No weapon formed that will prosper. Whether that weapon comes at night. Whether that weapon comes in the afternoon. It has no power. It has no power over you. Begin to rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Begin to rebuke it in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against you will prosper. We come against it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Open your mouth. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to challenge. Don't allow the enemy. Don't allow the enemy to take over your dreams. Don't allow the enemy. Father, we thank you. Now I want you to pray for the good dreams that you have been having. If you have been having good dreams and nothing is coming to fruition, I want you to declare. Declare good health. I want you to begin to declare the good things. Tell the Lord and say, Lord, may you bring to fruition those good dreams that you have been giving me. May you make them come to pass. May you make those dreams come to pass, Lord. The dreams that I have been having in my life, let them come to pass. Let them come to pass. We declare right now, let all the dreams come to pass. The dreams come to pass. The dreams come to pass. The dreams, let them come to pass. Let them come to pass in the name of Jesus. We declare right now, we declare all the dreams that your children, Lord, have been having. Let them come to pass. Let them come to pass. Let them come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. One more time, just thank God for this word. Just thank God and say, Lord, I thank you for allowing me to listen to this word. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want you to go this week. Be challenged and know that God wants to talk to you. I want you to be very sensitive to what God is going to do. If you are experiencing serious nightmares contact me we can do a zoom prayer and we'll pray for you but otherwise i want to say to everybody may the lord bless you may the lord keep you and the lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the lord lift up his